I'm Dr. Henry Wu. I'm a scientist. Some might call me an artist, a sculptor. My sculptures are living, breathing dinosaurs. What can I say? The Indominus Rex remains my most inspired creation. Nature can create a dinosaur, but only I can bring an Indominus Rex to life. To do so required a tremendous amount of research, gene mixing, splicing and manipulation, and, of course, determination. The end result is a hybrid dinosaur that is both beautiful and deadly. An alpha predator among alpha predators. So treat it with the care and respect it deserves. I'm Dr. Henry Wu. I'm a scientist. Some might call me an artist, a sculptor. My sculptures are living, breathing dinosaurs. The Indoraptor. This is a dinosaur created with a purpose. It can even see in the dark and uses echolocation to find its prey. Now, nature might eventually have created the Indoraptor, but I got there first. Is it dangerous? Yes. But then so is science. according to the paperwork I have in front of me. Another interesting factoid, its long neck meant it probably liked to feed on the taller branches of trees and such. At least that's what it says. Guess we'll find out, huh? <laughs> is bringing dinosaurs back from extinction if you can't find a way to make that fun and exciting and profitable, huh? That's where Isaac Clement comes in. He deals with the show, I deal with the business, huh? This bipedal predator is called the Acrocanthosaurus, and it is a dinosaur that has what I like to refer to as presence. When it's around, you know it. This animal should make for a killer exhibit. I mean, it being a killer and all. <laughs> now this dinosaur, the Draco Rex, is something strange. Its name means the Dragon King of a fictional school for wizards. I think I could have come up with that myself. The name, not the dinosaur. For that, we need the scientists. dinosaurs back from extinction if you can find a way to make that fun and exciting and profitable, huh? That's where Isaac Clement comes in. He deals with the show, I deal with the business, huh? Okay, this is amazing, a baryonyx. These animals have very large claws on their first digit. This dinosaur also likes water, so take a moment to consider its needs when planning out a suitable habitat for it. The baryonyx was originally thought to be a scavenger, but now, with live animals to study, we can find out for sure.
My name is George Lambert. Now, you'd think that dealing with prehistoric animals would be a problem. And you'd be right, as you probably discovered. But it's the unpredictability that really keeps us on our toes. Sure, the scientists can bring dinosaurs back, but fences keep them in. And without them, the fences, I mean, none of this is possible. This is a Cryolophosaurus, one of the more colorful members of the collection. It's a carnivore. So take the necessary precautions and don't let its looks deceive you. Everyone knows I have a soft spot for this dinosaur, the Velociraptor. And they get a bad rap as far as I'm concerned. But if you imprint early enough, you can make real connections with them. Other than Claire, raptors are the most intelligent partners I've ever had. And like her, they could kill me in the blink of an eye. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. said about the Triceratops. This is one of those dinosaurs that really defines our business. People want to see them, and we want to share them with the world. Don't let that fearsome appearance fool you. Those horns are mostly for defense and impressing other Triceratops. This animal is an herbivore. It can be a star attraction or a security nightmare if it turns those horns in our fencing. Changesaurus. Neat. Really great that we're bringing back all these fast, hungry predators. Even better that I get to stay in the office with locks on the doors. <laughs> Okay, so this next dinosaur, the Parasaurolophus, has a flair for the dramatic, especially where its head is concerned. It has a distinctive cranial crest, which is used for added resonance in its vocalizations and to regulate its body temperature. Albertosaurus, so named because it was first discovered in the Canadian province of Alberta. This animal is a smart predator that relies on its rows of sharp teeth. They exhibit pack behavior, which is very exciting to witness, as long as you're doing so from a safe distance. the Ankylosaurus. I call it an armored ball of walking, breathing trouble. Still, some might call it charming, amusing, delightful. <laughs> Each to their own.
first discovered in China, the Chunkingosaurus has distinctive twin plates that run along its back, and it can swing its spiked tail, called a thagomizer, like a massive medieval mace. This is a dinosaur best observed at a distance. There was a lot of controversy about dinosaurs being the ancestors of modern-day birds before this one was introduced into the park. It's an Archaeornithomimus. I think it puts some of those arguments to rest. about the opposite of subtle. And I don't mean Owen. No, this is the Chasmosaurus. It has dynamic coloring and these large openings, called fenestrae, in a frill that rises above its head. This is a dinosaur that says, look at me. So, maybe a little like Owen. Here is a Brachiosaurus. It has long limbs relative to the rest of its body. And what makes it really unique is that it's a warm-blooded dinosaur. I mean, how amazing is it that in bringing these dinosaurs back, we're also learning so much about them. Mondosaurus. This is an herbivore that can move on all four feet or go upright and walk on its hindquarters. We should be able to control and monitor this species more easily than some of the others. Use that to your advantage as you plan out the park. Stay with me. This dinosaur is called a Carcharodontosaurus. Talk about a mouthful, right? And seeing that this animal is an alpha predator, its mouth is usually full of the slow, the weak, and the inattentive. <laughs> Hence the reason I'm not getting near it. You, on the other hand, Cephalosaurus, or thick-headed lizard in Greek, which is where it gets its name. Claire has accused me of being this dinosaur more than a few times. It's also an herbivore, so obviously she couldn't be more wrong. About me, I mean. This 
dinosaur, the Dilophosaurus, has a distinctive neck frill it can expand when it senses danger. It's also been known to spit into the eyes of its prey, blinding it before it goes in for the kill. say fences make good neighbors. I say without them, dinosaurs like this one, the Pachyrhinosaurus, shouldn't be in the park. This animal is built like a tank, and it has the personality to match. This dinosaur is large, bulky and has a stubborn disposition. It's called the Iguanodon. It's an herbivore with attitude. I'd suggest giving it a wide berth. It's dinosaurs like this the Majungasaurus that can really be a handful. It's short, stocky, and lives for the hunt. This is also one of the only dinosaurs we know of that may have engaged in cannibalistic behavior. Nothing like having your friends over for dinner. This animal's primary habitat was the ancient primordial forest that once covered this planet. It's called Dryosaurus. Before our research, there was no information on adult specimens of this dinosaur. We only had the fossilized record of juveniles. But now, that's all changed. This massive specimen is called the Apatosaurus, an impressive animal that can intimidate even the most determined of predators. The Apatosaurus's evolutionary advantages are its size and its demeanor. Crichtonsaurus, named after the author Michael Crichton. Famous for his stories about infectious viruses, sentient nanobots, and also a novel on ancient animals, which I quite enjoyed. This is a social dinosaur that does well in groups. This animal, the Myasaura, is known as the good mother reptile because its fossils were first discovered in a nesting colony. And really, who doesn't love a good mother? Wild apart. 
parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, I meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. This dinosaur has a skull similar to a crocodile's, and a disposition that isn't that far off either. The Sukumimus originally fed on fish and small prey. Let's make sure it doesn't expand its diet into two-legged animals wearing collector t-shirts. This dinosaur, the Corythosaurus, is a duck-billed animal that looks like it's wearing a helmet. I mean, check that thing out. I wouldn't want to butt heads with it. Now this dinosaur is something special. Well, they're all something special, but this one stands out because of the horns on top of its head. It's called Ceratosaurus. It kind of looks like a slightly smaller T-Rex, but its bite is probably about the same. gigantic Spinosaurus you have here doesn't quite live up to its name. Don't get me wrong, it's big, but manageable. Just watch out for those shoulder blades. They'd ruin anyone's day. Now, what we have here is a Herrerasaurus. It's a carnivore and a spectacular addition to our dinosaurs. It just requires a little TLC. Let me introduce you to the Metria Canthosaurus. Say that fast three times. This is another alpha predator that, while not as big as some of its cousins, tends to stand more upright. So I guess it has good posture while it's tearing you to shreds. the Taurosaurus, a dinosaur that has the largest skull of any known land animal. And people say I have a big head. <laughs> This sauropod, the Nigersaurus, was originally discovered in fossilized form in the Republic of Niger, hence the name. Now, it lives thanks to our efforts and our science. Notice the long tail, the flat skull. However, this dinosaur is smaller than some of its cousins. Now that we have them to study, perhaps we can learn why. Dr. Kajal Dua. I'd ask what brings you here, but I'm not sure I'd get an answer. <laughs> so
some of these animals present a real test of our abilities. Take, for instance, this latest dinosaur, the Gallimimus. It's an opportunistic omnivore that does best in groups. That alone isn't the problem. But the speed? Gallimimus is incredibly fast, which presents special challenges for the ranger teams tasked with monitoring them. I'm Dr. Kajal Dua, and while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. Known as the Chambered Lizard, the Chimerosaurus impresses with both its size and its blunt snout. It prefers to live in groups, a challenge, but one I'm confident you can handle. dinosaur is important for a number of reasons. I mean, they're all important, but this one, the Deinonychus, was the center of debate among paleontologists for many years. Specifically, were the dinosaurs cold-blooded or warm-blooded animals? With them alive and in the park, we have our answer. This is a Euoplocephalus, an herbivore and relatively harmless dinosaur, as long as you stay out of the way of the heavy club on his tail. If it swings that your way, you could be relatively finished. My Chinese isn't very good. Okay, I don't speak it at all, but let me give this one a try. Huayangosaurus. Nailed it, I think. Anywho, this is a type of stegosaur that was first discovered in the Sichuan province of China. It's a popular species with our guests and with crossword puzzle creators. <laughs> This flat-headed dinosaur, the Homolocephaly, can appear unassuming, and perhaps even cute to some. But let's also stay on top of the science. We can learn a lot from a little. Kentrosaurus is another of those spiky-backed dinosaurs. A dinosaur that relied on intimidation to keep the predators at bay. And failing that, a difficult meal to catch and chew. Think of it as a prehistoric porcupine.
Any time you hear the word mega, you know you're dealing with something significant. And the Megalosaurus is no different. This meat-eating theropod dominates any environment it finds itself in. While that's an admirable survival trait, it's also one that we cannot accept here at the park. I want to make that clear. If it is possible for a dinosaur to be both elegant and awkward at the same time, then the Mudaborosaurus takes the prize. This is a large herbivore that should make for an excellent addition to our collection. resemblance between the Nasutoceratops and modern-day cattle? Look closely at the horns and their relation to the eyes. It's clear to me that as we bring these animals back to life, the connections between the past and the present sharpen, and along with it, our understanding. This is what my science is all about. This one's more my speed. The Aranosaurus is named after the Arabic word for courage, which is kind of my thing. This dinosaur is easy to care for and really only wants a comfortable place to eat and rest, and to be left alone. <laughs> Sound like anyone you know? successfully introduced a new dinosaur, a Proceratosaurus. This animal is instantly recognizable by the colorful crest on its snout. While smaller in stature than some of the other predators, it is not a dinosaur to be taken lightly, let me tell you. got into the paleo curation game, even I knew of the Stegosaurus. Those plates running along its length from head to tail make it one of the most iconic dinosaurs. Our guests are gonna wanna see it, so make sure you do right by this animal. is the Polacanthus, and it's covered in armor plates and spikes. Mess with this animal at your own risk. Okay, this dinosaur is something special. Seriously, look at the size of this thing. It's called the Mementosaurus. This thing is one of the largest animals to ever walk the earth. And now, thanks to the wonders of genetic engineering, it's doing just that again. The 
This duck-billed dinosaur is an Alara Titan. It was one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to go extinct. Until we resurrected it, that is. Now it lives to be studied and put on display. The Alora Titan is a herbivore. As it grinds away its teeth while eating, it has hundreds more that continually take their place. There's a lesson in there somewhere. The Pentaceratops here. It has five horns. One on the nose, two on the brows, and two extending out from its jugular bones. It seems excessive, but maybe it's necessary. Personally, I don't think the Troodon gets as much respect as it should. It's one of those dinosaurs that seems like an evolutionary bridge, stuck in time and transition. The platypus of its day, and now, ours. It's also incredibly interesting to study and display, so make the most of this animal. Here is a Notosaurus. This dinosaur tends to be shy and likes to keep to itself. And it has a thick skin. Sort of the opposite of Owen. in a dinosaur with an extremely long tail? Then this dinosaur is for you. It's called the Sauropelta. Covered in bony armor, it has long spines projecting from its neck. All that being said, it is a relatively calm animal when placed in the right environment. This is the Stigimala, and it is one hard-headed dinosaur. It has an armor dome crowned by horns. Despite this, it's a social and relatively docile animal, unless threatened, and steer well clear of it. This dinosaur can do a number on its enclosures and bash its way through any number of obstacles. Take that into consideration when you're planning its environment. Dinosaur, the Styracosaurus, has huge horns and a large spike similar to a rhinoceros. It also has the personality to match. It's an herbivore and uses those horns and a beak to break into even the toughest of plants. a funny little dinosaur. A correction, a pretty decent sized one, if the truth be told. It's called a Tsintosaurus. The T is silent. 
like the P in swimming. <laughs> yeah, and it has a mohawk. At least, that's what I'd call it. Look at an ostrich or emu, then look at this latest dinosaur, the Struthiomimus, and tell me you don't see a connection. This is one of the more bird-like dinosaurs that we've brought back from extinction. It literally has a beak instead of teeth. It's an herbivore that prefers to move in herds. Overall, a fantastic addition to the park. Another massive animal. The Diplodocus was once considered the longest animal that ever lived. And now, thanks to our extensive research, it's back. My task is to make sure we learn everything we can about this dinosaur. Your task is making sure these magnificent creatures can survive in the modern world. This animal, though an herbivore, can intimidate most predators with its size. It's a biggie named Dreadnoughtus. I'd give this dinosaur a wide berth. This dinosaur is one of the earliest known animals, dating back to perhaps 216 million years ago. It's called Coelophysis, their remains can be found scattered across the globe. But if people want to see a Coelophysis up close, this is the only place to do it. The Compsognathus is a small predator, but don't let its stature fool you. It can be a ruthless hunter. I'm Owen, a specialist in dinosaur behavior. I've formed a unique bond with the raptors. Now, don't be jealous. <laughs> Nice, Carnotaurus. You could recognize this predator immediately by the horns on its head, which give it a real rock and roll appearance. Those powerful legs can get this dinosaur moving as well, so probably best to stay out of its way. This dinosaur is so metal. Isaac Clement. Together, we'll create the most spectacular dinosaur park imaginable, and hopefully not die in the process. <laughs> really, I don't want to die. Right, the Sinoceratops, an herbivore that shares many traits with its more famous cousin, the Triceratops. This is a docile animal that you could make into a solid favorite with a little effort. Of course, we're all expecting more than a little effort, but I'm sure you get what I mean. Don't 
spend too much time looking at those plates. When it comes to the Werhosaurus, it pays to keep an eye on this animal's thagomizer. You don't want to be on the receiving end of a swing of that tail. a relatively small armored herbivore from Cretaceous Australia. What sets this species apart from other members of its family are the horizontally orientated plates that run along the sides of its backbone. Hence the binomial name, Minmai paravertebra. I finally get it. I finally understand why people have a fear of the dark. Once you peer into the shadows and see a pair of Dimetrodon eyes staring back at you, well, you'll be having nightmares for years. That's if you're lucky enough to walk away, because believe me, not everybody is. something special about this one uh je ne sais quoi it's a pyroraptor had it not been for a forest fire sweeping through southern france our little feathered friend here may have gone undiscovered and my life insurance would be just that little bit cheaper <laughs> Just when you think you've seen it all, along comes the Therizinosaurus. And believe it or not, those huge claws you see, they actually help to feed on vegetation. For real. But, uh, just do me one favor, okay? Don't let it near my hair with those things. Ostralovenator has been labeled the cheetah of its time, and I can certainly see why. Here we have a hunter with terrific speed, power, and focus. The makeup of a perfect prehistoric predator, really. Just don't get spotted, because there's no way you're going to outrun this one.
I'm a fairly trusting individual, but if you were to tell me that you'd seen anything like this before, I'm not sure I'd believe you. This tusk therapsid is Lystrosaurus. Astonishingly, this species managed to survive the Permian-Triassic extinction and went on to thrive as the dinosaurs began to populate the Earth. Here's hoping it can enjoy a long tenure this time around too. People often talk about the thrill of the chase, but if you got one of these on your tail, you'll soon become the kill of the chase. This right here is the Atrociraptor, a truly tenacious hunter, and it is simply relentless. At least, that's what I'm told. <laughs> I don't intend to find out firsthand. Ancient mythology may not be my speciality, but I've been told that Morose Intrepidus was named after the Greek deity Morose, the personification of impending doom. It was said that he gave people the ability to foresee their demise. And if you come face to face with this Tyrannosaur, I suspect there is a good chance you will meet your fate. I've heard a lot about you, so here's a little about me. I'm Isaac Clement, but just call me Isaac, no need for formalities. Besides, in the park, we've got to watch each other's backs. Now, people think we're in the dinosaur game, but the truth is, we're entertainers, and our headliners traveled 65 million years to make the show. So let's make it a good one. If you ask me, I think this animal gets a bad rap. Back when fossils were all scientists had to go on, this Mongolian dune dweller was branded an egg thief. But you know what? It was really just looking out for its own. So as far as I'm concerned, the Oviraptor is all right in my books. Every dinosaur that's recreated is important, but some also capture our imaginations. The Allosaurus is one such animal. It is believed that in its original environment, it was squarely at the top of the food chain. I'm interested to discover if that's true, given the opportunity. to confuse this animal, the Giganotosaurus, with the T-Rex. They look similar, act similar, and both have that eat everything within their field of vision thing working for them. This dinosaur is also fast. Bottom line, if you find yourself running from this biggie, you've already made a fatal mistake. that the Sinosauropteryx is the perfect size for a cute plushie to take home. But this dinosaur is a pretty mean hunter for something so small. Trust me, you really don't want this one snapping at your heels.
I'm Dr. Kajal Dua. And while you're keeping an eye on the dinosaurs, I'll be keeping an eye on you. The U Tyrannus. The feathered tyrant brought so much excitement, so much intrigue to the scientific community when it was first discovered. And here we find ourselves in the presence of that illustrious Tyrannosaur. Just don't be too surprised if it ruffles a few feathers, okay? Dinochirus. This downy dinosaur is often likened to an ostrich. Not surprising, I suppose, considering the long neck, the feathers, the beak. It's just a lot bigger in size, huh? But if things go awry, something tells me this one doesn't need to bury its head in the sand. <laughs> Okay, even I have to admit that this next dinosaur is impressive. The Spinosaurus is perhaps the largest of carnivores. Of course, I'll never get close enough to one to see for myself, but <laughs> that's why I have you. Welcome to your future, and our past. I'm Claire Deering. I used to be management, until things went awry. Now I'm more of an advocate. John Hammond wanted a world with dinosaurs, and I want us to take care of them. I hope you do as well. There isn't a more iconic dinosaur than a T-Rex. Even people who don't know the difference between herbivore and carnivore know all about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And when you see her up close, feel her gaze, you understand why the T-Rex was the ruler of the Cretaceous period. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Kajal Dua. I'm something of a perfectionist and I demand it in others. So I expect that you'll do your best. I just wanted to make that clear. Oh, and welcome. Although I find myself tasked with assessing the danger that these prehistoric animals pose, I can't help but be in awe of these stunning creatures. The Barbarodactylus, for instance, casts a striking shadow thanks to its boomerang-shaped wingspan. Let's just keep them safely contained, okay? I'm not sure I'd trust them to come back of their own accord. While the parks have become famous for dinosaurs, it's not quite the way we'd want. Hopefully, working together, we can change that. Sorry, meant to introduce myself. George Lambert, security specialist. Our challenges are many, so let's not waste any time. Honestly, the flying animals concern me the most from a security standpoint. We can round up escaped land animals, but when they take to the sky, all bets are off. This is the Sayarodactylus, and we need to make sure it stays confined to the aviary. The only known species of this animal before today was named after the Latin name for frightful. That should tell you something. Hi, I'm Claire Deering. I'm extremely passionate about the dinosaurs 
and about our responsibility to take care of them. Now, you'd think a mouthful of teeth would be scary enough, but this animal, the Dimorphodon, actually has two distinct types of teeth in its jaws. And it flies. Well, more accurately, glides. My name is Isaac Clement, and it's great to finally meet you. I hope you're ready, because the dinosaurs can't wait to meet you, too. I'm not sure about you, but I've not seen anything like this before. Check it out, the Sungariptorus. This pterosaur would use its curved jaws like a crowbar, levering shellfish out of the mud before cracking them open with their blunt teeth. That's pretty resourceful, huh? If you don't think nature can be bonkers at times, then you've never laid eyes on this newest animal, the Geosternbergia. However, it is apparently graceful in the air. Not that I would know, but isn't that your job? Fuzzy little reptile is the Jailopterus. It's pretty cute, huh? Well, you see those tiny little fangs? <laughs> They'll give you a nasty nip if you're not careful. So be careful. This latest animal is also a flyer, the Maradactylus. Its name is based on an ancient legend of a chief's daughter. Her name was Mara, turned by sorcery into a river monster with long teeth that devoured fishermen. <laughs> I change a few of the details and this could be my ex. studied these animals, the more I've noticed that there's a fine line between fascination and fear. Prehistoric flying reptiles like the archetypal Pteranodon have captivated my imagination since I was young. Yet there's something about these creatures that makes me feel somewhat cagey, shall we say? Everything is bigger in Texas, and that certainly applies to their fossil finds. This towering pterosaur is definitely one for the record books. We're talking about one of the largest flying animals, like, ever. It's not a bird, and it's not a plane. It's a Quetzalcoatlus. Without fireworks. That's what this next animal gives us aerial color and excitement. And check out that sail behind its head. It's spectacular. Oh, I, I meant to say that this is a tapajara, one of our more interesting flying species. If you couldn't have guessed by now, I'm a fan. I think you should be too. Uh. 
is one of the larger pterosaurs and is known for its keel-tipped snout. In the aviary, it should make for one heck of a draw. When people come to the park, they want to learn something, sure, but they also want to be entertained. And this marine reptile, the Mosasaurus, is just that, a showstopper. If the T-Rex is the ruler of the dinosaurs on land, then the Mosasaurus holds that title below the waves. Make sure this animal is a premium attraction. until things went awry. Now I'm more of an advocate. John Hammond wanted a world with dinosaurs, and I want us to take care of them. I hope you do as well. This dinosaur, the Attenboroughsaurus, is named after the famed naturalist and documentarian, David Attenborough. I guess you could say dinosaurs run in his family. about the dinosaurs and about our responsibility to take care of them. We know that all life began in the sea, the primordial soup. Some creatures made their way to shore and started the chain reaction of land animals. Others stayed in the oceans, like the Elasmosaurus, and set the pattern for the marine life that would follow. This beautiful animal has a long neck and a flat tail. With the right setting, it should really attract the crowds. I'm Owen, a specialist in dinosaur behavior. I formed a unique bond with the raptors. Now, don't be jealous. While dinosaurs once ruled the Earth, other animals ruled the seas. Take the Ichthyosaurus, a perfect example of what I'm talking about. They have a large dorsal fin, much like a dolphin. Or actually more like a shark. was named after the titan Kronos, a legendary ruler of Greek mythology's golden age. Pretty cool, right?
taking them here now. I hope you understand how vitally important this is. Oh, I haven't introduced myself. Dr. Kajal Dua. You need to be as passionate about our work as I am. I'll accept no less. It is the diversity of life we are discovering that I find to be most interesting. Take this animal, the Lyopleurodon, for instance. This is a carnivorous marine reptile that is optimized for efficiency, both for swimming effortlessly through the water and for relentlessly hunting its prey. And what nature created, we can recreate. And maybe, if I can be so bold, improve upon. Or at least find ways to exploit. body, an elongated tail, and four powerful flippers that help it glide through the water. Like modern-day sea mammals, it has to come up for air. It basically spends its time surfing and eating, which is not a bad way to live. survive in these waters, you've got to be prepared to stick your neck out. I mean, it was hard enough for Styxosaurus 70 million years ago, when the hunters were already becoming the hunted. <laughs> but we're not in Cretaceous Kansas anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. A bit of courage isn't going to save you from the dangers that can lurk in these depths. told you not to eat then go in the water but with this predator the tylosaurus if you go in the water you're gonna get eaten i mean seriously this is every sailor's nightmare come to life that dealing with prehistoric animals would be a problem. And you'd be right, as you probably discovered. But it's the unpredictability that really keeps us on our toes. Sure, the scientists can bring dinosaurs back, but fences keep them in. And without them, the fences, I mean, none of this is possible. Whatever you do, do not write off the Donkolosteus as just a big fish. There's no teeth. Just two pairs of bony plates. And without warning, they can snap shut with the bite force greater than a wolf, greater than a lion, greater than an allosaurus. So keep your toes out of these waters, all right? One of the largest known ichthyosaurs to have ever lived, Shonisaurus is a scientist's dream. Years of studying their fossiled remains filled researchers with a vision. A confident vision, but a vision nonetheless. And now we see it realized before our very eyes, ready to show the world. has legs I said no it's staying in the water I don't want to be receiving reports of it running rampant in the sewers showing up in elevators 
Dinosaurus? <laughs> Not a chance. about the animals that have inhabited this planet the longest, it's normally the likes of crocodiles and sharks that spring to mind first. But Earth's prehistoric waters were also home to some mighty impressive turtle species, just like this one, the Archelon. 